If you've been following along in this tutorial series, you might be wondering, how do I access my Squarespace website when I'm trying to log back in? Well, it's actually very simple. We're just going to go to squarespace.com, go over to where it says log in, and enter your information in the spaces provided. From there, click log in. Next, you might be wondering, how can you change this giant picture on top? Well, that's actually very easy. If I go into my website backend again, I'm going to go and right here it says remove banner image. I'm going to get rid of that, remove it, it's gone. My website reloads here without the banner image, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to do insert banner image. Because I have some pretty nice pictures from a project I was just working on, it's right here. It's a nice little background. It's kind of vague, but kind of artsy. I like it, so I'm going to insert that, choosing it from my computer. What's great about Squarespace is its ability to take these large, high-quality image and process them to be the perfect size for your website, whether you're making it this small picture or whether it's the large picture on top. Because the picture is such high quality, that's why it's taking a long time to upload right here. And just like this, your website will sort of reset as it is uploading this new image. Like I said, it's taking a long time because it's such a high quality image. When it first gets uploaded on the website, it's going to be a little slower. From here, it'll snap into place. And just like that, I've started to customize this website. From here, it will snap into place. And if I want to change this text right here, right in the section where I clicked Remove and Insert Banner Image, I'm going to click Settings. And in the description, you can see that the same text that's on this front part, the sustainability starts with you and learn more, is the same right here. So whether it's just regular text or bolded or underlined, it tells the Squarespace template to change the text to whatever this is sort of like. So the bolded letters means it's the large one. So I'm going to say e portfolio. And I'm going to say professional. Click save. And just like that, I have a nice looking homepage for my ePortfolio. Now that you know how to edit one page on your website, let's go back and look more at this sidebar that I said that you're going to be using so much. When we click on Pages, probably the most important tab in the entire thing, this section says all of the different pages that are on your website. Just as I said, this is the main navigation area on top. Right here, these are all your pages that are in your main navigation. So I have my home, just like right here, about, all of the little sub pages that go with the about, uh, news, read me, and this take action guy right here. Now if I want to add another page to this home navigation, I'm going to click on this little plus. Squarespace gives me the option of what type of page I want to choose. Do I want it to be a store page, add a product, I could do a folder of pages, that's kind of what this is where it has a whole list of other pages right under it. A music album, might be weird for professional portfolio, but I'm not going to judge you. Well, that's not totally true. I might think it's not the best idea. But for right here, I'm just going to make a regular page. So click Page. Let's say that I want to create a page that has my resume on it. So I'm going to say Resume. And I'm going to drag and drop that into place. I want that to be right after the About page. So I'm going to drag it into place right there. And now like you see on this home navigation, it says home, about me, resume, news, and read me. 
the page is empty because I haven't added any content to my resume page. If I wanted to do so, just like we learned earlier, I'm gonna click edit. And I'm gonna add from scratch all of this different option for right here. I would probably click the bubble, text, and then I would add in the text that's on my resume from a Word doc or however I want to do that. I don't have that in front of me, so I'm going to edit that later. In this sidebar, I also see that there's a section for a secondary navigation. What that means is you can have another little navigation right here on the bottom. I'm not going to use one of those, but if I wanted to drag and drop one of these pages right here, and as you can see, that secondary navigation is a little lower than I thought. It's right down here on the bottom. Now if I didn't want this page to show up on my main navigation or my secondary navigation, I could actually drag and drop this and take it to the non-linked section. Now if you have a page in your non-linked section, maybe you're pointing back to it with one of the buttons that we created earlier, and there's something that says read me and it takes them to this page, but basically it's going to be a harder web page to find. If I want to just add one, once again, I'm going to click on the plus sign and add a page just like I did for the main navigation. Let's scroll back up to the top. Now remember, all of these pages have content on them because it's the sample pages that came with the website. We're going to go back to the main page of the sidebar. And right there, you can see that is how you access these different pages. Now for this next part, I'm going to go back to the home page here so that you can see how we're going to design the little nitty gritty details of this website. Here we're going to go into our design tab and you have all of these options in the design tab. You can go, you can insert your own custom code if you know code. You can insert a custom logo or change the title of the website. Right now it's changed John Tunger but you can go and you can add your custom logo if it's right there. If you want to change your template, you can click on template and go into their list of templates and change that. But most of your work is going to be done in your style editor section right here. So let's click on the style editor. Now this contains all of the main little details that have to do with your site. When I say details, I mean the color of the font, the type of fonts that you use, the color of each little button, how far you space certain things. So let's start to look. We can go right here, the site title font. So our site title, remember, is this guy right here, the thing that says John Tunger. So I can grab that. I'm using the Proxima Nova font. If I wanted to switch that to, say, Able, it's going to switch that font just like that. Now, Proxima Nova is a great font, so I'm going to stay there with Proxima Nova. It's probably one of my favorite fonts that Squarespace uses. And that's one of the things, usually with these websites, you get some great fonts. They're made by designers who know what they're doing, so a lot of the times you can trust the options that they do. Say I want to make my font larger. I'm going to just drag that guy, and all of a sudden it's just a, t a lot bigger. I like it small, so John Tunger, it's a long name. It fits on one line. I like it about that size. You can even change everything from the details of how spaced the letters are from each other. If I wanted to get weird, I could just, you know, that could actually look kind of trendy, maybe hip, but I'm going to bring that down again. So that's just the section for my header right here. You, ha you see that you have the site navigation section, so I can change what color th these things are. You see how there's a little button right here. I'm going to go and I'm going to change the style of that button. So I'm going to make it, no, not solid. I want to make it a square button. Yeah, right there. But I want it to be a square with rounded corners. Yeah, there we go. So it just changes the corners just a little bit. So you get the point that you can change all of the little details right here. Now, if you don't want to search through this sidebar and try and find exactly what you're trying to edit, say I'm going to go right here and I want to edit this text. I don't like the way that this font looks. I'm going to click on the little blue box and it's going to take me straight to the section. 
go back to the sidebar. I want to edit, say, this main little button right here. I'm going to click on that. And oh, I want to change this color to a little, a little lighter. No, that looks bad. I like blue. Let's make it a blue. And just like that, I've continued to customize my website. When I'm done editing all these things, I'm going to click Save and go back to my side panel. So I've thrown you into how to edit your ePortfolio. I've tried to give you a handful of helpful lessons on how to change things around on your website. A lot of these things are just going to come from going in and messing around with it. Like I said in the introduction video, there's a lot of old marketing student ePortfolios that you can use as references when creating your own. You want to make sure not to go in there and copy them, but say, let's go back to Michael's. And you can look and see how he laid out some of his things. So he put his portfolio at the top. He put a contact here, which once again, if you remember going into the little bubbles and clicking on those, there was an option to just get a contact form. So you see he did something like this. If we go back to Hannah's website, She even made her a cover page for her own. And she also goes, and in her experience, she separated into from professional and academic. From what we learned in this video, you now know how to go add a picture, add a little paragraph, and a button, separate it with a line, and you can go and you can kind of make the same exact sec section that Hannah made. It's all about going in, and when you click on a certain item, creating a custom page for that different item and there's literally so many ways that you can go in and edit your website you want to go back to your website back end and from here you can click on settings domains and then click get domain from here Squarespace is going to ask you if you want to upgrade your account from the current trial account to one of their paid subscriptions like I said earlier, if you sign up with your .edu email, you get 50% off your first year. And with that comes your own custom domain. So just like Hannah has on her website, you can get your own hannahellenwood.com or johntunger.com, whatever you want. Now for those of you who have stuck around for the entire length of this video, I'm going to tell you the ultimate secret. I'm going to give you a resource that will take your website from around a level 7 website to a level 10 website. The secret is that the key to having an amazing website is having great pictures. Whether that's having someone just like Hannah right here taking pictures of you so you can have professional pictures for your website, or as you're going in, like Michael had, having great pictures that go along with things like contact or whatever it is, great pictures are the key to having a great website. And the resource that is going to change the game for you and your ePortfolio is this website called, write it down, unsplash.com. Unsplash.com is an ultimate resource for royalty-free pictures. Now, I'm sure if you Google royalty-free pictures, a bunch of other websites will come up, but this is the best one that i found. People who have made their ePortfolios before you are probably shaking their fist at me right now because I am telling you the resource where they got all of these great pictures. You can scroll endlessly at all these top quality pictures that they have that you can use for header images, side images, you can click this little guy right here at the top and it gives you a way wider view of all of these different things. All of these pictures can be used for completely free. Like it says right here, free, do whatever you want, high resolution photos. You can go in up here to the top and type in computer. Or better yet, let's just say marketing. In all of these pictures, that the photographers have tagged as marketing will come up. I'm not quite sure what these pictures have to do with marketing, but you get the idea. 
I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and then it gave you a very simple guide of how to start editing your Squarespace website. My name is John Tunger. If you have any questions, you can always message me. Go to johntunger.com and click the contact button or ask the other business majors around you that know what they're doing when it comes to websites. But just make sure that no matter what, you are pumping out a great looking and quality content filled e-portfolio. That is going to give you the edge when it comes to applying for jobs and solidifying your personal brand in the professional workplace.